Good afternoon, my name is Jacek Czaja and this is one of the videos for the DISCOM project. Now, I would like to start with you clearing your thoughts, closing your eyes and just focusing on the story, feeling it. Imagine you are boarding a plane. You are standing in the line and in front of you there is a wonderful loving couple talking uh, with their children. You get on the plane and while taking a seat you see a pilot whispering something to the flight attendant. You get a little bit suspicious, a little bit worried, but then just right before the takeoff and minutes before the announcement to put your phones to the flight mode, you see that um, a CEO of the multi-billion international corporation you just a few days ago sent a CV to calls you. You pick up the phone and hear, hello, did I reach? And now, if you could tell me, what was the gender of the pilot? Was the couple same sex? Was the couple or any part of the, uh, any member of the family of different race of, it, of another? Maybe of different race that you are? Was the CEO a man? What accent did they have? British maybe? American? What gender was the flight attendant? And on a separate note, how many of you have heard parents say to their kids, I really hope you will marry someone of different religion, different nationality, race, maybe of same sex. It would make our lives and our family so much more diversified, wouldn't it? Regardless of what your answers were, it's okay. Today we will be discussing the topic of biases. There are many definitions of the concept, some of them are indicated in the presentation right here. Let's have a quick look. The first one is from Cambridge Dictionary and I included it simply because I wanted you to see how, what is the common understanding of the word. The second one, and I guess this is one of my favorites, is, the, is from National Center for Cultural Competence. And the last one is from Wiki Wikipedia because, let's face it, you would look it up anyway. And from those definitions, I picked three issues that I would like to bring your attention to. Firstly, that biases can be either in favor or against something. Secondly, that bias is not based in evidence. We could say it's not quote unquote legitimate or not reasonable. And last but not least, it has a strong connotation with unfairness. Bias, what is my definition of the bias, how I understand it, is a cognitive tendency to, le to lean towards or against something or someone without legitimate, justifiable, logical reason to do so. And when we think about this, in this very moment, I should stop the video and say, let's not be biased then. Let's form our opinions only on verifiable, justifiable factors. Let's be reasonable. And I guess most importantly, let's be fair. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. You see, apart from the biases that we realize and let's say choose to have, like for example, leniency towards family or friends, there are also unconscious, unconscious biases otherwise known as implicit or hidden biases that operate outside of our consciousness. And right now I would like to quote Dembra Chop from a wonderful article addressing, addressing cultural bias in the legal profession, which is very close to my, my heart. Implicit biases are different from explicit biases that are concealed. The former affects our behavior without our knowing it, while the latter are biases of which we are aware and that we do not and we do seek to hide or control. So very important distinction between um, explicit biases that are being concealed and implicit biases, unconscious biases. Let's dive into to illustrate and just give you the idea of most common examples of implicit cognitive biases. Confirmation bias. The best example I, I would say is um, searching, for example, for positive effects of or negative effects of or self-diagnosis, which I would like to call from a headache to a brain cancer in a minute. This is a tendency to research 
favor, interpret it, memorize, and recall information in a way that confirms our previous assumptions, supports our beliefs, our values. Another example of a cognitive bias would be choice supportive bias. It's a similar tendency to the previous one, when you are not objective, but you look for information that supports, rationalize your prior choices. Um, I bought this coffee machine and suddenly it just tastes, this, is, this was a right choice. The other coffee just doesn't taste quite like it. Anchoring, and everyone who um, reads about negotiation, about first offer will probably know this bias very well. Um, so it's, it's basically a disproportionate reliance on the first information, on the topic subject, what is important regardless of the uh, source of the topic and reliance of such source. The other one would be bandwagon effect uh, that leads us to believe in something uh, on conf or conform to something simply because others do so, not necessarily because we believe it. Um, very interesting availability heuristic bias, which is a mental shortcut when we rely on information that comes to our mind quickly. Immediate, immediate examples um, that are very, very vivid and based in our, rooted in our uh, memory. Um, yeah. Mm, for example, fear of flying. This would be uh, one example of such bias. Or survival bias. Uh, very interesting where we judge something based on solely on surviving information. So for example, you see those headlines, first things every good dancer do every morning, or daily routine of every billionaire. Or for example, when someone says that ancient buildings were um, built in a manner that made them so resilient, and we actually do not know what is the ratio, and we do not analyze the ratio between the buildings that already collapse and the buildings that are still standing. So now we may wonder where it all came from. And uh, truth be told, I'm neither a neuroscientist nor a psychologist, but the phenomenon at its core is quite simple. So our brain processes all the time enormous amount of information and data. Therefore, understandably, in order to manage it all, it looks for patterns, it categorizes, it takes shortcuts. It filters the data and gives us the most important bits and parts. Our brain acts based on what we were taught, on our uh, early learnings of our experience. We can say on, based on our lifelong exposure. And this exposure includes obviously the negative one. And I don't think I need to elaborate how our lifelong exposure is connected to the concept of culture. But what is astonishing is that, and it's very backed up by research, is that our brain has a unique ab ability to, in the blink of an eye, differentiate between those who are quote unquote obviously like us or in group from those who are not like us or are outside of our group. And our brain signals uh, based on those differentiation accordingly very fast. And speaking from evolutionary point of view, um, our very survival depended on that ability. Um, we needed to distinguish the friends from the foe very fast. We needed to assess the danger. And to be more precise, we needed to distinguish familiar and expected from unfamiliar and irregular. And our brain is a huge fan of familiar and is not an equal, equally huge fan of, the, of what is unexpected and unfamiliar. And as we probably all know, although our society has moved and changed a bit throughout the last few thousands of years, um, and now it is less far likely that something that is unexpected and someone outside of, um, so to speak, our tribe will, is, a threat to, uh, is a threat to us, uh, our brain simply did not adjust it equally fast. So when we say phrases like, I don't see color, I don't see gender, uh, I am disability blind, I don't see age. People might actually believe it. Even more, they might be even right in a sense that they don't want to see it. But they are wrong so that whether they like it or not, and more importantly, whether they are aware of such or not, 
they do see it. And more importantly, they, their brains see it and they pay very close attention. Do you know that one of the most interesting cognitive biases is a bias bias, otherwise known as a blind spot bias, which is a cognitive bias of recognizing the impact of biases on judgments of others, whereas failing to uh, understand the impact of biases on our own judgment. And simply saying it just means that we all think that we are less biased than others. And I will quote Deborah Chop once more. When we talk about culture and its effect on human behavior, we are also talking about difference. And where there is a difference frequently, there is also bias, both conscious and unconscious. And I want to assume that most of us do not want to treat other people unfairly or differently simply because they are different and do not comply to what is expected by us, what we are used to, our, so to speak, norms. Especially in the context of intercultural communication, this is, plays a huge part as biases towards a person we are communicating with in, and in consequence, not for treatment of them, a disturbed receipt of the message, uh, unreasonable attitude, might be a huge obstacle in the process of communication. So what to do? There are multiple ways to work on our biases. And although they have one thing in common, and is, it is to realize and acknowledge that my natural, so to speak, or maybe uh, better put, unconscious reaction might be in plain opposition to who I want to be as a person. What are my goals? What are my values? How I want to react in particular situation. To realize that we are not color, gender, disability, etc. blind. That we are culturally conditioned. That I am, and probably you are, in fact, a biased person. And that is okay. There is no need in feeling guilty about it, but there is a huge need to examine my behavior, to look and recognize and acknowledge biases of mine and consequently work on them and try to find ways to minimize the effect of, of them. One of my favorite uh, mechanisms would be the idea um, called flip it to test it. Um, when you change the person, or for example, from female to male, and compare your previous actions in the similar situation and whether if the, the person would be representative of the other group, uh, you would act similar or behave in the same, same manner. I find it very useful. And at the end, I want to leave you with the last reflection. In my own country, Poland, uh, people commonly say to small girls, um, a phrase, dziewczynce nie wypada, which is, uh, can be loosely translated to, it is not appropriate for a girl. And probably you can think of an expression of a similar sentiment used in your country, and the distinction does not have to be based on gender, it can be based on any criterion you, um, that comes to your mind. And that question is, um, that I very often ask myself, is how the word would look like should the phrase go instead of it is not appropriate for a girl, it is not appropriate for a good person. Because at the end of the day, in most scenarios, is there really a difference? Thank you.